Thank you, Dennis. Hi, everyone. Welcome to week three panel session number two. I'm going to give everyone just about two or three minutes to get um, logged in. And um, I hope you all were able to watch the Monday um, week three panel session one. It was awesome. If you missed it, definitely go back on the app and go to your calendar and go to that uh, date for Monday, which was the 16th of November, and you'll be able to recap and take notes. Hi, everyone. We still have students and teachers logging in. I'm just giving everyone a couple of more minutes to get um, logged in and situated. Um, go ahead and make sure you have something to take notes with just in case. Today, we're going to have a deeper dive in of the Career Launch Academy with Sean O'Keefe and Miss Mary Ellie. If you did miss Monday's uh, panel session, be sure to check it out on the calendar widget within the app by going to the selected date, which was Monday, November 16th, and make sure you take notes. Also, if you do have any questions that you would like to answer, um, that, would you, that you would like answered, um, be sure to use the Q&A box at the bottom or at the top of your Zoom uh, page. Do not use the chat. Be sure to use the Q&A box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sean and Mary Ellie to introduce themselves and we'll get started. All right. Thanks, Aria. What's up, everybody? Um, great to be back for those of you that uh, were here on Monday or um, watched, uh, watched the recording of Monday's session. Um, Mary Ellie and I are thrilled to be back. Um, so I'll give a brief intro. Um, so Marielli, and then um, I got a I got a something really uh, that uh, I don't want to give it away by telling you what it is, but I, I've got something to share with you that was shared with me when I was uh, close to your your age, and it was a huge wake up call. So maybe it won't be that impactful for you. <laughs> maybe it just be kind of something fun to hear. But um, I have something fun, something I'm really excited to share with you. Then we're going to talk about resumes. Um, best practices, and then talk about um, intentional and strategic networking. Um, so, but as far as the, who I am, uh, I'm, um, I'm the founder of, the, uh, of Career Launch. Um, Marielli is my partner. And um, I also teach at Santa Clara University, which is a, um, a, a small university in Silicon Valley. Um, I was a um, high school student in, in Northern California. I went to community college and then I transferred to UC Santa Barbara. Um, I was a communication major and um, my life changed my junior year because of a professor who kind of believed in me before I believed in myself. And um, uh, that, that interaction um, with that professor changed my life. It helped me get three internships while I was um, before I graduated and then those three internships helped me get the job, a job in an industry that I really wanted after graduation um, without having any connections. I don't come from a family that has any connections um, and I didn't have the best grades either. I'm not telling you not to get the best grades. You should get the best grades, um, uh, uh, but I, I didn't. Um, and, um, but some, sometimes for some industries, 
um, you know, straight A's don't always matter. Um, and a lot of times they do, but not always. Um, so in, in regards to um, this journey of career launch, um, we're a two-year-old organization. We're a social enterprise, which means we're somewhere in between like a traditional company and a nonprofit. We're kind of a hybrid um, model. Um, it means that we care about being of service to society as part of our mission as an organization. Um, so really glad to be, be here today. Um, that's a little bit about my, my background and, and I'll turn it over to my colleague here. Hello everyone. We're really happy to be back today. Um, for those of you that are, that are new and are here today, my name is Marielle Rubio. I am a partner and director of Impact at Career Launch. And a little bit about myself, I'm currently in my last year of college for my undergrad and I'm studying civil engineering. And so a little bit of how I got involved with Career Launch, um, I took like the class format uh, my sophomore year of college. Um, so about two years ago where I learned how to network and create, um, just create a network from scratch and learn how to talk to professionals um, in order to get internships. And again, I'm a first gen student, which means my parents did not attend college. And I just had very few family members that knew what the college system was like, um, wasn't really sure right how to create connections. And so this program learning along with other students, how to reach out to professionals um, was very, very helpful. And so I'm really excited to share my story um, and also share some tips on resumes um, and other great advice that will help you um, on your journey. So again, really, really excited to talk to you all today and I'll hand it back to Sean. Okay, if you have a piece of paper nearby, um, it could be a blank paper, it could be binder paper, it could be a half sheeter. Um, I, I want you to draw a circle. And if you just have your computer with you, um, maybe you just open up an email and I want you to type yourself an email. Um, but if, if you have a piece of paper, I want you to draw a circle and then I want you to put um, two lines through it. All right. And you're saying, okay, well, what is this? So, so this, this image, the circle with the, with the four quadrants, this is your life. That's right. This is your life. All right. So if you have a, if you have a, um, you know, a piece of paper in that first quadrant in the top upper right, I want you to write the word absorption. And if you're like me, I spelled the word wrong um, the first time I wrote it, and that's okay. You can spell it however you like. Um, but absorption uh, means you're absorbing things. And then also I want you to write in that quadrant um, one through 20. So absorption one through 20. So this is called the circle of life. So from the time you're born, I said one to 20, you could put zero to 20, but stay with me here. From the time you're born to the time you're about, thank you, Mariali, there you go. Um, from the time you're born to, to you're about 20 years old, this is the absorption stage of life. Um, when we're born, you know, we start crawling. And then as we get a little older, we learn to walk. And as we get older, we, we start to run. Then we might play our first sport. We might play an instrument for the first time. We learn another language. Um, we get a little older, um, we take different classes in junior high, we might have our first boyfriend or girlfriend, we get our heart broken, um, we take more classes that we never took before. Um, we might you know, um, try a different club or participate in something new. From, uh, from, the, from the time we're born until the time we're about 20, this stage of life is called absorption. We're absorbing new experiences and new skills. Now in the second quadrant, I want you to write the word implementation. And I want you to put 21 through 40. So implementation, you know, I, I write worse than a doctor, so um, I'm not sure you can read that. There, thank you, buddy. Ali. Um, 21 through 40 is this, the phase of implementation. So we fin we, you're in this first stage of life, absorption. So in this first phase of life, we're, we're gaining all this knowledge and experiences. But as you head into the next phase of life, implementation, that's when it's time to act, right? You're going to have these ideas right now as high school students and as you graduate and, and most of you will go to college and some maybe will choose not to. Um, but in this stage of life, um, 
you're, you're thinking about what the next stage of life is going to be like in, in your 20s and 30s. And that's really when the rubber meets the road. Because, um, you know, uh, the musician Drake, um, he had a song, maybe when you, you might have been too young to remember, uh, remember this, or maybe you love Drake and you know all his hit songs. Um, but he had a hit song like seven or eight years ago called The Motto. Um, and if you were all, I'd ask you to, I guess someone could put it in the chat, but you, a lot of you know what the motto is. The motto is you only live once. Now I know that as high school students, maybe when you hear the phrase, you only live once, you think about like doing something irrational. Um, that's what most people think of when they think about YOLO. Um, but I would encourage you to every time you hear the, the, the acronym YOLO, you should think about it a second way. You should think about it in terms of your career. Because it is true, we, are, we have one life to live and we have a lot of different ways that we can live this life. So, you know, on social media and with your friends, you know, anyone can talk a big game, anyone can post whatever they wanna post. But when you get into the second, second quadrant of life, 21 through 40, it's time to implement. And some people will and some people won't. And that's what's gonna separate the people who have success and, some, and, the, and the people who don't. Um, so there's another more pragmatic name to this quadrant I like to say. Instead of implementation, you can write this down. You could put, put up or shut up. And what that means is some people will do and some, and some people won't. It's either put your money where your mouth is and actually do, you know, do and achieve and, 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 and take risks and take action, even though it's okay if you make mistakes, you can learn from your mistakes. But it's like, you got to do, you got to implement. Um, so you're learning a lot. You're going to continue to learn a lot. And it's not, it's not just what, life is not about what you know. It's also, actually, there is a famous quote. Life's not just about what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. So we're going to share some things with you today. And 50 of you are going to get to, um, you know, enroll um, or be participants in the Career Launch Academy in January and February. And we're really excited to work with those 50 students because um, we're going to take you on a step-by-step -step approach because some of this stuff as a high school student, a small, a small percent of you would just hear all this and you're like, yes, let's go, let's rock. Um, I, you know, just tell me more and let me, let me get start doing. And then other of you, you're, you're here and you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, that might've been good for Sean. And Maybe that works for Mattielli too, but I don't know if that could work for me or some of these concepts. I got butterflies in my stomach just listening to some of these ideas about what they're talking about or about what you should be doing. You know, give me a, give me a break. I'm a high school student. So you can choose to, you know, think about any of this any way you want. Um, what I can tell you is I, I, I believe that between now and, and the end of our time here today, um, the, the amount of butterflies that you'll have about this, this uh, topic of resumes and intentional and strategic networking, I think will reduce the amount of butterflies you'll have. Um, and then certainly if, you're, if you get to be one of the 50 that goes through our program in January and February, I, I can almost guarantee that um, anyone who gets to participate in that um, will go from almost have zero butterflies by the, by the end of those four weeks. All right, so let's go to the next quadrant. So 41 through 60. This is called wisdom. So 41 through 60. Um, there's another term that people use. Um, and maybe you haven't heard this as high school students, or maybe you've seen it in a movie, or maybe you heard like an, an aunt uh, talk about it or something. But like, um, there's this term called uh, midlife crisis. Think about that. Crisis? Nobody wants to have a crisis. I mean, we're living in a crisis right now. We're living through a pandemic, right? I don't think anyone else wants any other kind of crisis. But there's this, there's this, this term, and if you haven't heard it, you'll probably hear it as you get older, midlife crisis. So what I hope, and this, I, this is not my own material, this circle of life, this, these four quadrants that we're talking about today, um, this is not my own material. I got this from a professor, and when I heard this talk, it was a wake-up call for me. Um, when I heard about implementation and put up or shut up, I was like, man, I got to start spending less time on some of the things that are not serving me very well 
And I got to spend more time on things that could help me for my future. And I remember going home and I had been a paper boy delivering newspapers and I had worked at the local pizza parlor, but I had never taken the time to put together a resume. And, but after I heard this, this talk in class that night, I went home. I was like, I got to get going on things I could do to better my career. And for the first time that night, I made my, my, I made my first resume. So midlife crisis, you know, so the reality uh, uh, of, of life is that unfortunately, there's going to be, you know, some people who get to, let's just call it 50 years old, somewhere in the middle of, of this quadrant of life. And they're going to wake up one day, they're going to be drinking their cup of coffee. Um, and they're going to think to themselves and look around and say, you know what? I like my life. You know, it's not perfect, but I got a job I enjoy. Um, I've got a, you know, I've got a good family life. Not every relationship's perfect, but you know, I, I make good time for family. Um, my health's in pretty good shape. My spirituality's in pretty good shape. Um, you know what? I'm pretty happy with the decisions I made to get to where I am at 50 years old. Unfortunately, other people wake up at 50 years old. They're drinking their coffee and they have a lot of regret. They're alcoholic, they're divorced. They hate their job, their kids don't respect them, etc. And these are terrible things. Why am I sharing all this with you as high school students? Because how you spend your time now and into college, it can play a big difference on how your life turns out at 50 years old. It really can. If you use your time wisely, not everything's going to be perfect and you're going to try things and it's not going to work and you're going to have setbacks and you're going to make mistakes. But if you use your time wisely, even if you're not a 4.0 student, you can make sure that you, you, know, you don't have a midlife crisis down the road and you can get into the, you know, um, have a great college experience, land internships, get, you know, get a good job after graduation. None of this is easy. But if you're intentional about how you spend your time and the things that you do, you're gonna be in much better shape than other, other students across the country. So I, I, I believe just for the 119 people that showed up today, and anyone that watches this um, after the fact, um, the fact that you're investing your time here and in this program, because Aria and her team have done an excellent job of putting together five weeks of programming for you, engage in this stuff, soak this stuff up, because it really matters. Um, that last quadrant, and we won't spend as much time on it, is reflection. So 60 plus, from, so from the age of 60 plus um, is reflection. And you know, you can learn a lot from people who are 60 plus. And I'm not talking just like your, your grandparents. Um, hopefully you're having conversations from your grandparents, but um, I know we're in a pandemic right now, but when, when, when things kind of go back to normal, and if you're sitting in st at Starbucks one day and you find yourself like, just like looking at your phone and there's like someone, you know, older sitting next to you, I would encourage you to pick the brain of that person. Whether that person's had fabulous success or made a lot of mistakes and maybe even the, you know, had a midlife crisis. When you talk to people who are older, they're wise. They have, they have, they, they've reflected, they have wisdom um, and, and they can share with you. And sometimes some of the best learning is learning vicariously through others on what not to do. You know, I have a friend whose dad has made some bad decisions. I've learned a lot from my friend's dad um, on what not to do. I've also learned a lot from other people on what to do. So that is the circle of life. Um, I wanted to start with that. Um, maybe that had a little bit of value or maybe you're like me and that, that had a lot of value and that was kind of like a light bulb moment for you. Um, so I'm gonna shift gears now right now. I'm gonna share my screen and, and, and we're gonna talk resumes. So your resume, if it's in a pile with 10 or 20 other resumes. You kind of want to be at the dog at the kennel that's up front saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. That's what you kind of, you want your resume to do because the people who hire um, employees, whether it's at a local pizza restaurant like I had, or maybe you, you can go find a local business in your city. Um, uh, you can, you know, so there's some, there's some businesses that have all types of job functions. 
So your school district, your, your local hospital, um, they have IT departments, they have accounting departments, they have finance departments, they have operations departments. Um, there might be, you know, there's all these types of jobs that you might not even be aware of. Um, and so like if you, maybe you say, you're, let's use IT as an example. You might say, I wanna get into IT. And obviously, IT is a very, very broad industry. Um, and so you, well, but there's no IT companies in my town. But your school district has an IT department, your hospital has an IT department. Um, you know, your fire, local fire district has, a fire, has an IT department. Like almost every, um, you know, some companies outsource their IT department, but um, there's a lot of companies that they might not do exactly what you wanna do, but they have people who do that job function. Um, so keep, really keep an open mind. I really encourage you to talk to your college and career counselors, um, utilize them. They're great resources at your school. Um, because you could start getting some experience right now. And if you can't get anything that's paid, if you have some extra time and you can volunteer, volunteering is great. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, um, Orange County beach cleanup is fine. Um, you could, you could, but you could, you could do all, there's all different kinds of volunteers. And so, sometimes you can just volunteer in a, in a certain job function, um, like an unpaid intern even. Uh, maybe it's just a, a day or two of shadowing during Christmas break. You can, you can try and invent stuff. And the more, the more, stuff and volunteer and part-time jobs you can get, the more experience you get, not, not only is it helpful for your resume to be this, the dog in the kennel, you know, um, they have more things on your resume to convey to employers, um, but you're gonna meet people and you're gonna learn vicariously. It's, it's, it's so, so valuable. All right, so getting, getting back to the, to the resume. Um, some basics, um, you know, especially all the way through college, you don't wanna have more than one page. Um, you want it to be balanced as far as, you know, don't have it all squished to the top or all on the left-hand side, make sure the page is balanced. Um, make sure it's proofread and make sure there's no typos. Um, if you've ever submitting something online, convert it to a PDF. Um, sometimes with some resume systems, if it gets sent in like a, a Google doc or a Word doc and it, the, the, the formatting can get messed up. So I'm sure, um, you have, you know, a lot of your school projects, you have to convert things to PDF. Always do that for your resumes too. Um, there's something, this concept, <laughs> even college students uh, um, could, could do a better job at this. This concept called planned emphasis. So, um, and some of you might be saying, look, I'm a, high, I'm a high school student. I don't have anything to put on my resume. Not true. Um, you have the fact that you're in high school, you're taking certain courses. Um, and if you're, um, uh, if you've done any type of volunteering, if you've had any type of part-time job, if you're involved in any kind of club or sport, these are all things that you could put on your resume. Um, and, um, but the thing about planned emphasis is if you have, you know, a page full of information, there's something about you that is your best attribute. And for some students, it might be their GPA. But for other students like me, it might be the fact that, you know, I, had, you know, I was waking up at 4.30 in the morning delivering newspapers as a junior high student. Um, um, that, at, at one point in my high school career, that was my best attribute, right? Um, high school students by nature don't have a ton of experience, but um, maybe you've done a lot of volunteer work that maybe that should be high and, and it should also be in bold. So you, you can't use bold a lot on a resume, but planned emphasis means the best parts about your resume should either be in bold or they should be in larger font. Not everything has to be in the same size font. Actually, the best practice is to have planned emphasis where some font is bigger and in bold in some cases to highlight your best attributes. Um, spacing is uh, more of an issue as you gain more experience into college and you have more things on your resume that's probably not as big of a deal as a high school student. And then this conservative use of color you see on here, um, you have different headers and sometimes just picking like a dark blue or a dark red, and, you know, dark green, or just some kind of a little bit of color. Don't do a ton of color, but a little bit of color can be a nice touch. So here's a, you know, oh yeah, here's a basic uh, uh, resume. Um, this is a college student resume, as you can see. Um, you can see that it's, it's, it's got sufficient spacing. Um, you can see here that planned emphasis, 
Um, the, the word Santa Clara University has larger font than anything on the page. Um, now, let me say this in regards to like resume format, you can have an A plus resume look 50 different ways. There is not one particular way that is the best resume template. Um, you can have an A plus resume look different differently. Um, like here, here's, here's, a, here's a format I like. Um, this got a, you know, a little bit of color, right? Some of the headers, it's, it's, uh, it's got two columns instead of one. Um, now, as you get older and, and you have to worry about like doing online applications to like bigger companies one day where there's a lot of artificial intelligence um, you know, looking at your resume, if you're just looking for a job in your hometown and you're just kind of dropping it off in person or send it over as PDF over email because either you're just cold networking or you get an introduction from a teacher or someone, um, that's one thing. Um, in, in college, the best practice is actually to have two types, two resumes, one for looks and one for artificial intelligence. I don't think you need to worry about that right now as high school students, but you should keep that in the back of your mind um, as, as you continue on into college because, and, I, and maybe this will be a non-issue by the time you get to college, because, but there's some people say that um, some artificial intelligence has a hard time reading two columns like you see on this example. So to play it safe, you should have everything in a more traditional way like this example. But I don't think any of you would disagree that if you were someone hiring and you had a 10 resumes on your desk, all in a pile, which one is easier to read, this one or this one? I think you would all say this one. It's just easier to digest. Now, both are fine. Neither one is wrong. Um, and then I'll give you one more example. Now, this is like a senior in college who had a lot of experience, but th this student um, put icons um, to give extra texture, if you will, um, to, to the resume. This person include references. You don't need, so that's actually another thing as a high school student um, would be great for you to do because you, you kind of thinking like, how can I take up all the space on the page for some of you? Um, you can take up some space by having three references. It could be a, 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 you know, if you're a sophomore in high school, it could be a, it could be an uncle or an aunt. Um, probably don't want to do mom or dad. Um, but it's probably acceptable as a sophomore in high school to have a family member and a teacher and maybe even a coach. Those, those, that could be your three references or maybe it's three teachers. Um, but references are great um, to put on a high school resume. You always want to go get the person's permission to first um, before you put it on your resume. So make sure you do that. Um, that's another great tip. All right. Um, cover letters. Um, this could be separate you as a high school applicant. Um, in addition to a resume, you can have a cover letter with it. Um, when you have a cover letter that looks like this, and I'll come back to this in a second, I think this is a great, easy format. Um, you wanna address it to a specific person, if at all possible. So instead of saying, and to whom this may concern, um, you, you put, you know, Mr. Valdez, Mr. Smith, Mrs. You know, Myers, or whatever, whatever, right? You put the person's name, if at all possible. Um, that's ideal. Um, you want the, 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 the content of your, your cover letter to be upbeat and confident in the way that you're, you're, you're talking about yourself. You want to be brief and to the point. You don't want long text heavy paragraphs. Nobody likes to read those kind of like, except for your English teachers. Um, they like nice long paragraphs. Um, but most professionals don't. Sorry, English teachers. Um, uh, don't repeat your resume word for word. Um, if you're ever dropping off something in person, you want to, um, you know, make sure that you have the same type of paper for both your resume and your cover letter. And then, of course, you want to proofread it. So just like a resume, you can you can create a cover letter in like 20 different, 50 different styles. If uh, um, I can probably share this with Ari and she could post it somewhere, I could give you this template. Um, but this is a great template to use. Um, it just has these two subheaders in the middle there. It says why sales, that would be the job function. So if you're applying um, to be a cashier, um, then you would put, you know, why, why cashier question mark. And you would talk about why you want to be a cashier. Cause you, you know, you're, 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 you know, you're responsible. You can be entrusted with money, um, et cetera. 
And then the se second part, it says why LinkedIn on there. What LinkedIn is a you know professional networking site. Some of you may be familiar with. Um, so you put the why in the name of the company. So when I was in high school, if I was applying to Roundtable Pizza, I would put why cashier, um, why Roundtable. And so you would want to customize this cover letter for every single job you apply for or internship you apply for. You could even do this for to volunteer. It will really impress someone. If you present a cover letter and a resume for a volunteer position, you're really going to endear yourself and, and have a really nice personal brand um, that you're communicating to the people on the other end because most, most high school students are not doing this. All right, let me stop there. Um, Marielle, if you have anything to, to share on resumes and cover letters, great. If not, maybe you can transition and speak about intentional and strategic networking, both uh, as a high school student and a college student. Sure. So I'm going to reverse a little back to the circle of life. Um, and I just want to say when I first um, listened to the circle of life in college, it really made me reflect right as to, oh my gosh, I'm only in the barely entering the second phase of this circle. Um, and I still have so much to go, but then I've also experienced so much, right? So even though the last um, quadrant in that circle is reflection, for me, I really think reflection is necessary in every one of those quadrants, right? Just taking the time to sit down and be and say, what have I experienced? What do I like? Where am I going, right? Always remembering like past, present, future setting goals, um, something I used to do a lot and still do. Um, on a piece of paper, I write down my goals, right? Whether they're short term, right? Things I wanna do in the next month or two or long term. Um, and I put them right where I can see them every day. So either um, in the bathroom mirror or right next to my door as I, as I go out. Um, and those just remind me every day. So, so again, just to emphasize, even though yes, you're in high school, like Sean said, even if you're thinking about all these things and take the time to really explore what you like, what path you wanna go, it'll help hopefully avoid a, a midlife crisis, right? And they're normal and a lot of people go through them, but again, right now you can, you can start using this time, um, especially now during COVID, right? Some people have more free time and so you can really explore and you really, you really value um, the relationship building, right? When you just kind of run into someone at school and you make a new friend or, just running into people anywhere it was a lot easier to connect. And now it's a little harder, but we can still connect online. So um, thankfully, you know, we can still make connections. Um, and then just a little bit about resumes and cover letters. They're really important because that's the first thing um, an owner or a boss sees about you, right? Or the hiring manager. That's the very first thing, um, if you haven't met them before, that's the first thing they see. So making sure it looks professional, right, it doesn't have typos, we'll, we'll tell the person, oh wow, they really took the time to work on this, they'll do a good job, um, right, working at this place or um, completing the role. And so really taking the time to have someone proofread it or always be always working on it is really good. Um, and one thing too, in high school when I had my resumes, it, all the things I did were completely different. Um, what I mean by that is if I wanted to be a doctor in high school, all of my volunteers and jobs did not have to be all in the medical realm. Um, so you can totally put volunteer positions, right? You worked at the animal shelter or you worked, um, I don't know, maybe volunteered at your church, um, at choir, things like that. So mine was all over the place and that's totally okay as a high school student, right? Because you're just exploring, it's a time of exploration. And I know I talked about that last time a lot. Colleges too, you're just trying to figure out what you enjoy doing, what you like participating and ultimately what makes you happy. Um, and so in college, you definitely wanna have more of a trend um, as to you know things you do. So for me, civil engineering, I had a lot more clubs and internship experience in either the construction industry um, or, you know, doing projects that were very focused in engineering. So it, it made a, a little bit more sense, right, when they interviewed me saying, why do you do this? But in high school, totally okay to have kind of all over the place. Um, and it gives you more to talk about. And if you don't have a space, right, to fill it up, you can also include projects. That's one thing um, I did too, to kind of fill in the gaps. All right, so that's my say on resumes and, and cover letters. Um, now transitioning into networking. So 
I actually started networking in high school without even knowing it. Again, I did not know what networking was in high school and I didn't formally learn about it until college. But so the way I networked in high school was by talking to one, my cousin, who was currently in college and I was in high school, and then also reaching out to a camp counselor um, that I had, gone, I had gone to like a one week engineering camp when I was in high school um, at Santa Clara University where I'm currently at. And all the, the counselors that were there were current students. And so what I did, I was a junior in high school. And this is when my teachers were telling me and asking, where are you gonna apply to college, right? And so I started feeling a lot of pressure um, because I didn't have a list of colleges. I had no idea what I wanted to study. I was very confused. And even my senior year, I was still pretty confused. But what helped with that confusion was talking to people, right? I also did a lot of research on my own, like did YouTube videos of campus tours and you know, read blogs online and went to the college website. But what helped me the most in terms of trying to pinpoint the college I wanted to go to was talking to people. Again, networking, creating connections. And so these people that I contacted weren't complete strangers, they were people I knew. Um, but I had never asked them any college related questions. And so my cousin, it was actually like at a birthday pot party. I hadn't seen her in a couple, a couple years. And then I, I asked, oh, like, what are you doing right now? And she said, I'm in college. And I was like, oh, whoa, like, what are you studying? And so, right, it doesn't always have to be a super formal interview um, or conversation. It can be casual, right? Where ju you just bump into someone at a party and you take the time to ask those questions of why did you choose that college? Um, why do you enjoy your major? What are you working towards, right? So those were the questions I asked my cousin um, and she explained, oh, I'm studying sociology. I wanna be a social worker. Um, and this is why I chose this university. And so as I was just listening to her and she told me about her experience of studying abroad and that was the first time ever I had ever heard of anyone going to another country to study and I got really excited. So from that moment, I remember I told myself, I'm going to study abroad when I go to college. And again, I didn't find this out on YouTube or online. It was from my cousin who I connected with and, and had a conversation. And so she planted the seed of study abroad. And then with the other camp counselor, um, I spoke with her my senior year of high school and, and I was between two schools. I had already gotten into the college but I couldn't decide whether to choose school A or school B. And I honestly, I was doing pros and cons lists. I was talking to people, but I, it was so hard for me to make up my mind. So I, was, I said, I told myself, I think the best way to make up um, this decision is to speak to people who actually go to those universities. And so I did. I spoke with someone at each of those universities, one of them being the camp counselor. And at that time it was like through text because she was too busy with school, which was okay. Um, but she answered the same questions like, what's better about a 30 person classroom than a 500 lecture, 500 person lecture hall? Um, or what kind of internships did you get at this big school compared to the small school? Um, and so I was able to learn from them so much about what the, those differences were and then ultimately made my decision, right? You always don't have to do whatever they tell you and you can just listen, absorb, um, you know, think about what they say and then make up your own decision. Um, that's an important thing to, to know too. And that's why you also want to talk to multiple people. Um, but so I made, I made my decision for, for the school um, and was really grateful because even five years later, um, I reached out to that same person who helped me decide and I said, how are you doing? Um, what are you doing right now in life? Um, she told me she was doing her master's in college and was going to work after that. And so just really cool to keep those connections. Um, but so really informative. And, and even to this day, last year, I, I studied abroad in Ireland um, as an engineering major. And that was because she, my cousin planted the seed of studying abroad. So, so again, that's like the beauty of networking. Um, and so now fast, fast uh, forward to, to college, um, networking there. Um, was really helpful for internships. So internships is when you have a summer job and they're really helpful for helping you determine whether you want to stay in that career or maybe, you know, focus somewhere else. And so um, I, I went through the career launch program, um, formally was learning how to network and 
um, how to contact cold, um, how to contact cold emails or like just strangers essentially. When you cold email someone, it's someone you have never met before or don't know at all, right? It's just someone you find on the internet or maybe someone told you about them, um, but you have no connection. And so I had never done that before. Like I said, one was my cousin, one was a camp counselor I had spoken to. So they were warm, warm connections is what you call them because you already had an initial connection. But so I learned how to cold um, network which means talking to strangers. And I remember sitting on my, in my desk and being really nervous because I didn't want to talk to strangers, right? These were also professionals, um, were pretty intimidating. And I really, I really didn't want to um, step out of my comfort zone. I, re I just want to keep talking to my cousins because I do have a big family, but that wasn't going to get me um, anywhere because I didn't have any family members in the civil engineering industry. And so that's when I said, okay, Marieli, even though you're really scared, you, you do have to branch out. Um, and that's when I applied the career launch method, um, sent out my emails, made a list of the organizations I wanted to work for, um, the people I like, right, did research on who I wanted to contact. Um, and that's when I met um, a woman who was a Latina, who had studied civil engineering at my school, but was now in industry for about 10 years and she was pretty high up in her company. Um, and she ultimately gave me an internship that summer in construction, right? And this all came for me sending one email asking for a, a coffee, a coffee chat, a 20 minute one. And at the end of the day, I had a, a job offer um, for an internship that summer. And so that summer, I worked as a field engineer intern um, at this construction company. So I walked around the job site, learned so much, so, so much um, about how a building goes up, right? All the machines you need to use. Um, and I learned a lot from the people on the job site too, right? Asking my supervisor, asking my boss, oh, how, how do you know when to do this? Or how did you like decide you wanted to work at this company? So even networking within people there was really important. And so what I realized at the end of the 10 weeks was that I did not like construction as much as I thought I would. Um, and that's totally okay, right? Sean said at the beginning, um, sometimes knowing what you don't like is really important too. Um, and so I, I reflected, right? I, I like to journal a lot, a lot. So I, I wrote all this down and I said, why didn't I like construction? Um, and I like was able to reflect, write down, oh, maybe it's the long working hours, right? I had to clock into work um, at 6 a.m. every day. So I had to wake up at five. And so I just worked long hours and I said, I don't know, they were a little, it was a little too intense for me. And then other components of the project, of the, of the job, right? I didn't enjoy as much. And there were great things too. I learned that I love talking to people. And that was the biggest realization from that internship. And so all in all, what I want, the message I want to give you guys as high, as high school students is that even if it's not a formal internship, even if it's just volunteering, you're always going to learn a little bit about yourself and being able to reflect and saying why I like that or why I didn't like that is really important because it steers you into a certain direction. Um, and something I drew really quick was these little graphs, right? This is what I thought my life was going to be, right? I thought I was going to choose a college, choose a major, get a job and be super happy. Um, and it ended up being this, right? I struggled to decide on a college. For a year, I didn't know what I was gonna study, right? So I was going up and down, up and down, then finally chose a major and then did internships that I didn't like up and down, up and down. And then did an internship with Career Launch last summer, loved it. So that was up high, right? And I still have a long way to go for life. So there's gonna be lots of ups and downs, but just know I've changed my mind a lot. I've learned so much about myself and just taking the time to reflect um, and really, really be true to yourself on what things you enjoy because again, we want to avoid the midlife crisis. Um, so yeah, so that's my experience with networking and I'll, I'll hand it back to Sean um, for this next portion. Great. That's great stuff there, Marielle. Very good. And Ari, as far as time? Yeah, so we that went by faster than I thought. <laughs> I was like, whoa, let me get back on. Um, but so before we do go, um, and guys, stay with this because I have the best announcement if you miss Monday. Um, but before we get to the announcement, 
any final advice that you all have for the students that are they're looking into trans, um, transitioning into college students or they're looking for their entry level positions you've gone over the resumes um, how to you know keep it professional keep it nice even the cover letter any additional ideas or suggestions on what they can do um, as well as they're going into their entry level positions and searching I'll go first and you can finish it. Um, my, my, my thing is actually not so specific because um, I think a lot of you through this, these five weeks and through the, you know, this today ends the first three weeks, you have a lot of knowledge now of what to do. But a lot of this stuff can be kind of um, things you put on the back burner or you, it's knowledge, but you don't take action. Um, but really the key is taking action and stepping out. And Mariela used the term stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, lean into that. Um, think of think think of a couple of things. One, um, think about how much you just think about things and think about what life is going to be like. But thinking is helpful and reflection is helpful. Um, but thinking without doing is not that helpful. At some point, you got to start taking action. The rubber hits the road. You got to implement, to use the term. And even though you're not in that second stage of life yet, start implementing now. And don't worry, don't worry about making us a mistake. Um, you know, you're growing up in the social media era. I, I would imagine almost every one of you has sent a post or a text to a, a group of friends and you're like, man, I wish I didn't have, hadn't have done that, right? You made a mistake. We all make mistakes, we make mistakes often. Making mistakes doesn't go away. As adults, we continue to make mistakes. Um, I'm not saying, intentionally make mistakes. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is put yourself out there. Um, take, you know, start doing, you know, get that resume. Don't wait till Christmas break. Start tonight. Why not? You know, if, you know, if you're going to spend time on social media, YouTube tonight, replace that time. Spend 30 minutes on your resume. Um, you know, lean into this stuff. I mean, this stuff can, can really change the trajectory. Um, it can help you discern, you know, hey, should, even though I got into a um, four-year school, maybe it would be better for my personal situation to go to a two-year school and then transfer. Um, or maybe, you know, um, you, know you, you're into, you got into multiple schools and, and, and you, you feel like you're just going to go with this one because, because of one person's opinion. But I think Marielle made a really good point on talk to a lot of people. And um, sometimes, one of the, I guess one other nugget I'll leave you with is when you do get someone giving you a strong opinion, think about that person and don't, don't let every single person who speaks into your life have a lot of weight in your life. What that means is you have to do some discernment because you're gonna hear a lot of voices over time and so all of them shouldn't have equal weight. There's people who have the credibility that you should give more weight to and there's some people that are very opinionated but they really you should not give a lot of weight to their what they're saying because they don't got a lot of show, to show for it. They're all talk, all show and no go, some people say. So be, be mindful of who you're listening to. Um, you always be polite and listen. I mean, you should listen, but as far as how you process major decisions in your life, um, get, a lot of, get, a lot of, um, uh, get a lot of different perspective to help you make your decision. All right, I'll keep mine brief. Uh, brief. So my advice is breathe because when I was in high school, like I mentioned, I felt extreme pressure to have everything figured out. And I definitely did not, but sometimes I had to fake, oh, these are my top schools or, oh, I'm studying this, even though inside I knew I had no idea. So my advice is breathe, enjoy being in high school, enjoy being in middle school, enjoy even being in college, right? We talked about YOLO, you're only in college once, you're only in high school once. Um, and so really taking advantage, right, of, of going to prom or studying abroad so that later when you look back, you don't have regrets. Um, and I know we all have limited time and you can't do everything on the list, um, but prioritizing and saying, I really, really want to do these things is really important. Um, and so, so that's my advice is just really enjoy your journey, right? Because like you said, there's going to be curveballs thrown at you, even, even COVID, right? No one saw this coming. Um, doing my last year of college from, from home was, has been hard, but at the same time, I don't feel that bad because I know I took advantage of so many things and 
went to so many events um, and did almost everything I wanted to when I was on campus. And so hopefully you can have that same mentality um, when you're in high school and entering colleges. Put yourself out there, do everything you can and just really experiment with yourself, right? Like try new clubs, try new majors, try new classes. Um, and so that, that's my advice, but really want to thank you all for, for listening to Sean and I, hopefully um, with our experiences, we, we inspire you and give you some good advice, but feel free to, to reach out um, and really excited for, for those 50 winners to continue on to the Career Launch Academy. Awesome transition and thank you so much um, for your motivational story and for the feedback. I know for the students and participants, remember this week is about building your strengths and your connections. Um, so be sure to use all of the tools on the Vitalink app to make connections with other participants that are also um, using the series. And who are these 50 participants? Many people are asking and they've been messaging um so if you did miss monday no worries vitalink is announcing the best package that any student would want any student um the top 10 of the uh, student leadership series will win a prize package from vitalink that prize package includes attending the sean o'keefe career launch academy be sure to check out the website on his exhibitor um, uh, profile, which is also in the app. So check for Career Launch Academy. The next part is you also get to have the opportunity to meet with various industry professionals as we're calling it Coffee with Professional and kind of learn about different internship possibilities, how to build yourself up, work on yourself, find those volunteer opportunities, find the mentor that may help you and guide you into the college that you're looking for or in the career path that you're looking for. And last but not least, of course, the gift card. You have to look nice as you're going into your new career, but we're not announcing the amounts. That's for you to find out. And then we are selecting an additional top 40 students to join in the top 10 and attending the Career Launch Academy. So how do you get into the top 50? Make sure you're completing all of your workshop activities, you're completing and submitting your exhibitor questionnaires, you're attending the live panel sessions or watching them, they are being recorded and posted back on the web, and you're also completing your weekly surveys. And now I will share my screen um, for the week three Panel two code. Be sure to log this code in to the community game leader board on the web app. You're going to see a, a blurb that says, got a code, enter it here, and you'll be able to receive your points. I want to thank Sean and oh, Mary. Are you, are you okay, go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, if you, when you're done sharing your screen or I could just, why you, this is still up there. I just want to tell, tell the students um, who weren't here on Monday what is included in the Career Launch Academy. Definitely. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So there's uh, three things. Um, the first is 28 days of micro learning. Um, what that means is uh, every day for 28 days, you'll get a text message and an email with a link. You'll click on that link and you'll have 10 minutes of coaching. Um, and we take a... Um, uh, you know, a topic um, of like, how to identify, uh, how to think about 10 organizations um, or five colleges or majors you might be interested in. Um, step two is like, how to identify people at colleges you might be interested in or, or professionals who work at um, in, in organizations in your hometown. Um, and then how do you send a cold email to someone? What do you put in the subject line? What do you put in the body of the email? Um, should you make an email signature on your school email account? The answer to that is yes. And we tell you what to put in the subject, uh, in the email signature. Um, and then if you're gonna send a cold email to someone in your local um, in local business or nonprofit or whatever, um, we tell you exactly what to put in that email, how to follow up. If you get if you get someone to say yes to your, to your career conversation, we call it. Um, how do you prepare? How do you make small talk? What questions do you ask? 
Um, how do you write a thank you email the next morning? Um, uh, how do you keep the relationship alive? Like the, 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 the nitty gritty, the ins and outs of um, building relationships and, and then either just to learn um, or to, to, to get jobs. And everything that's in the 28 days of the micro learning is also in this workbook that will get mailed to your home. Um, and there's a lot of great stuff in here that complements the micro learning and there's um, templates of exactly what to put into an email to an uncle or an aunt, someone in your warm network or to um, a stranger who you've never met um, to have these career and college conversations. Um, and then the third part is you'll be invited to weekly group coaching calls. 45 minutes, Marielle and I will host four weeks, 45 minutes each. And it's just for these 50 students. So those are the three things that are included in the Career Lunch Academy. Awesome. So make sure you are in the top 50, if not the top 10. You do not want to miss out on this Academy experience. It's going to be amazing. You're going to learn all the tools that you need um, as you're transitioning from school to work. If you do have any questions, you can always email me. It's Ari at Vitalink OC. I'm also on the app. You can message me on the app if you do have any questions about the Academy or about the app in general. And I do want to thank Sean and Mary Ellie for joining us. We cannot wait to see you all at the Academy teaching us the tools and techniques to uh, help us get successful. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all next Thursday. Students, teachers, counselors, be sure to log back in next Thursday. Same time, oh no, sorry, next week's Thanksgiving. Take the week off and breathe. <laughs> the week after that is December 3rd. <laughs> we'll see you then from three to four. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.